Welcome once again to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. Today's film was intended to be a TCM premiere, but we got a little ahead of ourselves earlier this year and included it in a lineup of films honoring writer-director Cy Enfield. So this officially marks the second airing on Turner Classic Movies of the 1948 film The Argyle Secrets. This is an astounding turn of events, given that a year ago the movie was languishing in obscurity. But thanks to the loyal patrons of my Film Noir Foundation and our colleagues at the UCLA Film and Television Archive and the Hollywood Foreign Press Association's Charitable Trust, The Argyle Secrets has been rescued from cinematic limbo and now looks and sounds as good as it ever has. Back in 2008, the Film Noir Foundation restored another film by Cy Enfield, the extraordinary 1951 thriller Try and Get Me. The reemergence of that film helped foster a fresh appreciation of Enfield, who until recently had only been a minor footnote in movie history. He was mostly known, if at all, as the director of the 1964 classic Zulu, which brought Michael Caine to the world's attention. Many people assumed that Zulu's writer and director, Cyril Raker Enfield, had to be an Englishman. But Enfield was, in fact, an American, born in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Like fellow U.S.-born directors Jules Dassin, Joseph Losey, and John Barry, Enfield's left-leaning politics made him persona non grata in Hollywood during the communist blacklisting of the early 50s. So Enfield opted to change his citizenship in order to maintain his career. He had worked in the New York theater scene while in his 20s. That's where he first encountered the man who became something of a mentor, Orson Welles. In addition to being a writer and director, Enfield was an adept magician, and his skill at sleight-of-hand magic impressed Welles, who fancied himself something of a magician as well. After Wells had set up shop at RKO Pictures, he once again encountered Enfield in a magic shop on Hollywood Boulevard. Impressed by his card tricks, Wells hired Enfield as an apprentice at Mercury Productions, then operating on the RKO lot. But when the debacle of the magnificent Ambersons wrecked Wells' movie workshop, Enfield caught on at MGM, where he made numerous short films, including a controversial one called Inflation, never released due to its perceived anti-capitalist message. Following his military service, Enfield made several Joe Palooka B features for Fox, in addition to writing radio plays. In fact, The Argyle Secrets began as a radio play, which will be evident from the start. Leading man William Gargan, as utilitarian an actor as there was in Hollywood, provides a voiceover narration that is laughable for its cascading complexity. I am positive this was intentional. Many of you watching will at some point have no freaking idea what is going on. And trust me, this is not a mistake. Enfield is having his cake and eating it too, spinning a tale that imitates the Maltese Falcon while simultaneously lampooning the endless twists and double-crosses typical in this type of story. Here, Gargan isn't a detective, but an ambitious newspaper man who gets tangled up with a crew of treacherous treasure hunters in the search for the Argyle album. Not a priceless jeweled antiquity, but a ledger, one providing blackmail fodder against U.S. politicians who had secretly collaborated with the Nazis. Even when he was spoofing around, Enfield couldn't resist pushing political hot buttons. Within these 64 minutes, you'll be seeing a young director becoming comfortable with the language of cinema. There's a lot of awkward exposition offset by scenes of great ingenuity and cleverness. There are also a few bits of business that would never pass muster today, even if these moments are played entirely for laughs featuring a rogues gallery of character actors soon to be fixtures on America's TV screens, Marjorie Lord, Ralph Bird, John Banner, and Barbara Billingsley, among others, here is the first film which Cy Enfield declared he actually felt like a filmmaker. From 1948, made in eight days for $125,000, 
and restored 70 years later on a comparable budget and much longer schedule. Here is The Argyle Secrets. <laughs> 